Hello, John Talley here with Boats.net. Today I'm going to walk you through the process to replace the timing belt on our 2003 Yamaha T60 outboard. It's really not that tough to do. We only need one part number, which is the belt, and I already have that. So let me go open up my toolbox, get this cowling off, and then we'll dive into this project. Now before you start this procedure, make sure you disconnect your battery. All right, let's start by lifting off this cover. And it's basically just held in by these rubber grommets. Just push up on it. It should release all four corners. There we go. Just doing a quick visual inspection. I'm always curious to see if these have been replaced before. This one looks like it might have been done because especially when they get, you know, well, 16 years old now, that is way past time to go ahead and replace them because like any other rubber piece, when they get age on them, they start to deteriorate and crack. And what will typically happen is it'll actually round off these teeth or just strip them off. Your engine's still turning, the camshaft stops, and then you go in and it bends the valves. Really not a good outcome. So this is something you need to look at at least every four or five years. Just pull off the cover, take a look at it, make sure it's not dry rotted anywhere, and it could be good to go. And if, if it's been enough time and you don't know the history, like we don't know the history on this one, go ahead and do it. And it's not that expensive of a part and it makes all the difference in the world to have one that's in good shape and then can keep going for years versus trusting something that's a little too old to be on there. Well guys, normally I have to bring this around to top dead center, but this one is actually stopped at TDC. And the mark you were looking for is this little one right here where it has an arrow in red, and it was going to that mark right there. So it is sitting exactly where it needs to be. So next, what we need to do is get this main bolt off and then get a puller to take off the, uh, the flywheel slash magnet. The other mark we want to keep an eye on is right here. That T, that line needs to be right where that pointer is. And once we actually get this off and get the belt removed, it is very important that you don't let the crankshaft or the, uh, the camshaft turn because they have to turn together. If they turn independently, you're going to hit one of the valves and bend it. And that's what we don't want. All right, guys, now we need to remove this flywheel bolt, and it's got around 116, 120 foot-pounds on it. It's a pretty good bit, and it's a lot to hold together with a breaker bar and this. So what I'm going to use is just an impact to take this off, but I will definitely need this tool when it comes time to retorque it, and that'll be a little bit easier to deal with. And that nut up top is a 30 millimeter. Yep. Now at this point, we do want to verify that we are still at top dead center. You see, it did move a little bit. We're gonna bring our mark back, verify it with our cam sprocket. I think we're good to go. All right, guys, I'm using a puller from Yamaha, which we carry. If you don't wanna pick up one of these, you just need to get a three jaw puller, but you gotta make sure that they go really close in because our pull points are just not that far away from uh, the, uh, the crankshaft itself. But any three jaw puller should pull this off. Just make sure that they're long enough to at least get about three or four turns in there so they don't strip. That should do it. And when you order this particular puller to hold it still, it comes with a stainless bar about this long that actually goes in right here and that holds it still. I can't locate mine at the moment, so I'm gonna use an impact to pop it off. There she goes. Before we lift it off, I wanna bring it back to top dead center. There we go. Now, let's lift that off. All right, next we need to remove the stator couplers, the pickup coil couplers, and then remove both the stator and then the, uh, the bracketry for it. Then we'll get this hose out of the way. And at that point, we'll be able to remove the timing belt itself. And I could probably just remove them and lay them over the side, but I don't want to put any undue stress on the wires. 
So we'll take a few extra seconds to get this cover out of the way and actually get to the couplers. Uh, the stator looks like we've just got three eight millimeter bolts. Now note the orientation where it came off. There's a little notch down here. That's where the wiring passes through. So we want to make sure we get it back in the same position. Now at this point, resist the temptation to try to remove this with just a regular Phillips. What we need to bring over is an impact Phillips. Otherwise, we're going to strip those. So let me grab that and I'll show you how to use it. This one has the Phillips tips. Then you're going to pull that out and you want to choose one that doesn't rock around and fits in there snugly. Light counter rotation and just pop it with a hammer. Yep, there we go. Makes it look easy, but if I didn't have this, you'd have a fight on your hands. We go. Now there's just two 10 millimeter bolts holding this pipe. That should give us more than enough room. So, oh, trying to lose our key. That will be important. All right, guys, I can tell you that nobody had messed with the tension on this belt in a long time. It should not be this loose. So, we're going to address that. What we're going to do is just loosen up the tensioner, push it to the most relaxed position. And at this point, we're going to recheck our timing marks one more time and then lift the belt off. There we go. Let's see if we can get this ball in here. Now, the real trick at this is you want to make sure that between here and here, there's no slack. Now, I do want to note that when you install the belt, the numbers need to be in the upright position. So I don't think I can get another tooth pulled. So that should be it. Let's release the tensioner on it. Feels right. All right, guys, the battle is just about over. Now we just need to put everything back together. Our pulser bracket. Now there are two dowels. There's one that stayed in the block. And there's another that stayed in the bracket. I want to make sure that they didn't get lost because it's critical that those are in place for this to line up properly. We bottomed them out with a regular screwdriver, but I'm gonna go back to my impact and just give it a light tap to make sure that they don't go anywhere. Now let's get our stator in place. Make sure you get it in the right orientation. Reconnect our wires. Get our Woodruff key in place. Tell you what, let's put a little dab of grease because I'm betting it's going to try to fall if I don't. Tilt it a little bit toward the top to where it's easier to engage. Now this magnet isn't super strong, but don't let it pinch your fingers because it's gonna try to pull it down. And our washer and our bolt. And 116 foot pounds on it. Now let's get our cover back on. 
All right, guys, that's going to wrap this one up. All I have to do now, well, all you would have to do now is put your cowling back on and you're ready to hit the water. Well, listen, if you need these parts and tools or anything else for your boat, why don't you come see us at boats.net and we can get you taken care of. And hey, you like what you see? Why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button? That way you can keep up with whatever I'm working on next. Hey, if you got any questions or comments, leave those in the section below and I will do my best to answer them. We just want to say thank you for shopping here with us at boats.net and we will see you in the next video. Y'all have a great day.